All right, so now I have this built. I have to test it. Does it fly? Um, this is the most nerve-wracking part for me. I, I get such anxiety over maidening anything, but this certainly gave me the most anxiety. Um, it also gave me the most excitement, but I made sure that when I went out to the field that no one was going to be there because I didn't need the extra distraction, but I also didn't know what this was going to do, and I didn't want to endanger anyone else. So my wife went with me so she could film, and I had three flights, and they were all very, uh, very informative, but also... Um, a little surprising. So the first flight I walk out, I'm holding the plane, I'm ready to launch it, I'm building myself up and I'm really nervous, but I throttled up and I threw it. As soon as the plane left my hand, I knew something was wrong. It pitched up and started to veer left over towards the pit area. And I tried really hard to get control of it and it wasn't responding much to my inputs. I was throttling up and throttling down. Fortunately, this test proved to me that this plane has enough power because if it didn't, it would have fallen out of the sky. It went over the pit area. I tried to turn right, but it wouldn't. It ended up coming back left when I, when I overcorrected towards my wife and at this point I'm telling her to watch out because I'm afraid it's going to fall on her and it almost stalled. I got it to turn back around towards the other runway over the pit and I was trying to turn right but it wouldn't turn right. It kind of leaned a little bit like it was doing like it was in some bad attempt at a knife edge. So I throttled it down and tried to bring it down as quick as I could because at this point I'm flying towards the trees and I don't want it to go in the trees. It came down a little hard on its nose. And at that point, I've seen enough of these impacts to know that the nose is probably an accordion. I walked over and to my surprise, all I could really see was a bent propeller. I picked it up, looked at the underneath, and the nose didn't look crushed. So I was like, okay, that's, that's a good thing. I didn't destroy this plane like I thought I was going to do, even though it didn't fly. The funny thing is, my wife was filming and she had no idea I lost control of this plane. So. I was very close to just throwing the transmitter and tackling her out of the way because this thing, I was afraid it was going to fall right over her head. I was somehow calm enough to have a controlled crash, um, something that usually doesn't happen. I, I tend to panic a little too much in these situations when I'm flying and then bad things happen. I, t I brought it to the pit, looked at it, wondered what was happening. I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't have any ideas. Like, maybe it's tail heavy, but it was balanced pretty good. And my wife noticed that I had a hole in the back of the tail where the push rod comes out for the rudder, but I didn't have a hole on the other side and air can flow through there. And I was like, well, that's a good point. So I kind of evened that out and it reminded me that I didn't have an escape for the air coming into the nose. There was nowhere for it to go. It may not have caused all these problems, but it was still an issue. So that's why I made that cut out on the bottom of the fuselage to let the air go through. I got up the nerves to do it again and I went out and I threw it and this time I was ready for it to go left so I trimmed the ailerons a little bit launched it, um, it pitched up a little bit, and I was able to get it to start turning right and fly a little straight. Um, in the video, it looks like a stable, controlled flight. Um, it, it was controlled and stable, but it was not controlled the way it should have been. I, I had to use rudder to get it to turn like that. It wasn't turning with the ailerons for some reason. So then I brought it around to land it and take another look at it. I got it down. Uh, again, fortunately, it has enough power because when it was getting close to the ground, it dipped up and stalled a little bit. So I gave it throttle and it, it kind of hit the ground a little softer. Looked at it. I didn't know what to do. I made sure the throws again were right. I made sure that 
they were good and, and they were the throws were high on all the surfaces. So I, I had to do it again. I, I gotta keep pushing the envelope here. I, I launched it a third time. This one was very short because again, as soon as I launched it, I'd already known that something was wrong. I threw it, it pitched up, I throttled it back and put it down on the ground. That one was a little harder on the nose and it, it put a little crease in the side, but nothing too major. I was excited after this, which was weird. So the thing kind of failed at flying, um, but it, I didn't destroy it, which is good. And the feeling I got, the excitement I got of, of trying something brand new, something that started out as an idea in my head and is now flailing awkwardly through the sky, it's just a great feeling. And now I get to troubleshoot it. And I, I really like troubleshooting. I like to figure out what the problem was. So fortunately my wife videoed and I could not wait to watch the video. With this video I saw that the pitching was happening with throttle. Okay, so I took a look at my thrust angle. I took a protractor, put it against a, a flat, uh, actually a piece of foam board. I put a protractor against a piece of foam board. I taped it there. So it was, it was level with the edge of the foam board and I placed it on a table behind the propeller and I saw that the thrust angle was actually inclined at two degrees. Okay, so two degrees, well, what does that mean? Is that, is that a big deal? It actually is a big deal. So if this prop motor combo is capable of 740 grams of thrust, which, which is actually a conservative uh, estimate, and you have a two degree incline on your thrust angle, that actually means that about 25 grams of thrust is pointing straight up. Imagine hanging a 25 gram weight at the tip of the nose, except in, in this case the weight was pulling up on the nose. To get a better sense of what this is, this, this plane is about 960 grams with a 2200 3 cell in it. And if I convert that to pounds, that's just over two pounds. And that 25 grams of thrust is actually pretty small in pounds. It's about 0.06 pounds, I believe. To have the same effect that this two degree incline in thrust angle would have on the plane by putting a weight closer to the center of gravity. Let's say I put a weight one inch behind the center of gravity. I would have to put almost one pound weight at that position to get it to do the same thing that this 25 grams of upward thrust was doing. And if you have experience in this hobby, you know that shifting of weight can be detrimental or beneficial to the performance of the plane, even a little bit of weight. So that was something I had to fix. It, it was an easy fix. Um, that's when I realized also that the motor mount was not very stable. It was a little too flexible and flimsy. So I put a shim, a, basically a piece of foam board, in the top, just above the motor against the top of the nose, and it pushed it down a little bit. I also put that modified nose piece on after the flight because um, well, first of all, I closed up some of the, the holes in the nose. It was just a wide open area. And I put this little nose piece on that just would help streamline the nose a little bit more. Uh, the video also showed that my wingtips definitely have a tendency to stall at a lower speed than I would expect. That's not um, that surprising. I kind of expected to have some weird or strange tip stall tendencies because the sweep in the center portion of the wing is actually driving airflow toward the wingtips faster. But what's happening is when they hit that straight edge, the airflow will actually slow down a little bit. I thought that the combination of a swept section and an unswept section would actually reduce uh, tip drag and all the tendencies that come with it because it would act as a, a disruption to that, what's called spanwise flow, which is what contributes to wingtip vortices and that contributes to wingtip stall, to wingtip drag. Um, it's the reason winglets were invented. They, they decrease the effect of wingtip vortices. Either way, if I can get this moving fast enough, I think it will have some pretty good characteristics. At this point, I still have to fly it again. I did some more um, modifications. I obviously made sure the thrust angle was good, but. If you decide to build this plane, I have to apologize in advance because um, you're, you're going to encounter some headaches with this build. Uh, I'm, still, I'm still finding ways to improve the build and improve the layout of the plan. So any feedback you have is welcome. Uh, hopefully I can get this thing flying much better. One of the things I'm trying to fix now is I mentioned earlier about my warped foam board. That, 
that's affecting the shape of my wing, the shape of my horizontal and vertical stabilizers as well. If you look at my plane from the front, you can see that the rudder is kind of twisted and bent a little bit, and that could be causing it to want to yaw left, that could be also causing it to want to roll right. The horizontal stabilizer is also uh, deflected upward a little bit, so basically put some weights on it overnight to get that bend out, and it got rid of some of it. The wings are also twisted. If you look at it from the front, there's a twist to them, but the way it's twisted, again, would lead me to believe that the plane would roll right, which it didn't, so I'm not as concerned about it, but I did place weight on it. So I set some boxes on top of the wings for about two days, and they were probably, they probably had about two or three pounds of weight in them. It wasn't too much, but it was enough to actually get some of the twist out of the wings. It's, it's a work in progress, and it, it was so fun. Um, it was stressful, but it, it wasn't bad. It wasn't a bad stress. It, it, was, it was exciting, it was exhilarating, it was very informative. Um, I consider it a success, even though the plane still hasn't had a successful flight. I guess you can kind of call what it did a flight. It stayed in the air, and I did it three times, and I didn't destroy it, which is good. So thank you for taking a look at this. Hopefully you found some of this informative, or at the very least entertaining. Until next time.